Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. I'm Greg Giglio, principal of Homestead High School, and here with our weekly video message for Friday, March 10th. Um, no special guest stars today, just some questions and whatnot going on. So let's go through our, our uh, stuff. So thank you, those who sent in uh, survey stuff. Last week, we didn't have anybody. This week, we definitely had some people send stuff in. So thank you for that. Um, we got some shout outs and recognitions to go through first. So wanted to give a, a, a shout out to Graham Logie. Uh, and the in his virtual enterprise students, they uh, qualify. The class qualified for the 2023 Youth Business Summit in New York in April. Uh, this is the second year in a row they've done that, and it's a pretty prestigious kind of thing. So good for them. Uh, I just want to thank all those folks who have been and will continue to participate in the American Heart Challenge. We've getting lots of good activities, lots of good involvement. Uh, it's even raising a little bit of money for uh, the American Heart Association. So we're happy to do that as well. Also, just wanted to welcome two new members of our staff family. We have Angelina Perez in food services and Aaron Alonghi in our resource department. So welcome aboard, folks. <clears throat> Questions and concerns. Um, so this one uh, person said, I just read this very interesting article about training high school students and maybe staff too on providing mental health first aid. And that's the link. And actually, if you go in to uh, the PowerPoint, when I send this along, that's a live link. You can click the article and read it if, you, if you're interested. Uh, wondering if Homestead already does this. And if not, maybe this would be a good program. Um, so again, in regards to whether we do mental health first aid training, you know, we, we haven't done it school-wide or staff-wide. Um, what this article specifically talks about. But we do have a couple clubs that are focused on mental wellness. And Sarah Lloyd, our school-based therapist, is one of the people that oversees that. And she's done some training for them because they actually started looking into this. Um, and they, they programs look great, but they were very expensive. Like I want to say one was like $50,000. Um, so that was a lot. And that was probably more than we were winners. But anyway, uh, Sarah did some training for some of the kids in there and whatnot. We we have also done some overall training for the staff on identifying and recognizing issues of mental illness. Um, you know how to how to look for signs, how to talk to kids about things. Um, so th there is some training that goes forward with that, but I wouldn't call it like what this article was calling the mental health first aid training. Um, but I have actually sent this along to our district mental health team to say, hey, maybe this would be a good time to do in one of the advisories because our district mental health team has done some social emotional learning or mental wellness uh, advisories. Uh, I think they've done about five this year. Um, every other one usually is theirs. And the next one coming up is also theirs. So um, let's see if they can uh, take that one on next year. I think they're all covered for this year, but next year might be a possible advisory. <clears throat> uh, another question was, uh, have Homestead faculty and staff been trained to recognize the signs of fentanyl overdose? Is Narcan stocked at the school and available to faculty and staff to use if needed? So uh, the answer is mostly yes. The whole staff has not been trained on this, but we have do have uh, admin and front office staff like our you know, student conduct liaison, our health clerk, other folks like that have been trained in, in terms of this. Um, and so we do have a, a little station here, put a picture in it. Uh, you can see that we have right next to our AED machine uh, is a, a, a container that has a couple EpiPens in it. And then that box right there is the Narcan. It's a nasal spray. Um, so we do have the ability to to administer that if if we have a situation. Um, hopefully what never comes our way, but we have stuff and we're ready to go and people do know about it. So yes, we have that. We've been up to date. Um, question was, in the past, 10th graders had to do residency verification Oh, you know what? I just realized I misread this entire question. <laughs> Sorry, residency verification at the beginning of the second semester is still a requirement. Ignore this, what I just wrote on there, because I just realized I misread this. Um, I thought they were talking about uh, <laughs> the April verification letter. Totally different subject. I will fix this on the PowerPoint. Uh, but residency verification is a process that the district has our students go through um, students and families. It's incoming ninth graders and current 10th graders. They're doing it a little bit differently this year. They're handling it at the district office. So it's not going to be that thing where you used to have to come and line up and show your driver's license and all that. It's all going to be done electronically. Um, so that will be happening, but that'll be happening through email and through the district office. So ignore this slide. We'll go to the next one. <laughs> Sorry about that. We paid a do closer reading, wouldn't it? Um, this, the, this was in, refer, in reference to the uh, spring fling that just got canceled. Uh, was there a deadline to purchase tickets to the spring fling or an announcement that X amount of tickets needed to be purchased by X date or it would be canceled? Uh, and if so, where was this posted? I'm not sure students realized that there was a deadline to purchase tickets. So perhaps it wasn't low interest, but a misunderstanding as to when tickets should be purchased. Um, <clears throat> what uh, I don't believe there was a specific announcement like that out there, but there were lots of announcements leading up to this about 
please buy tickets, you know, this the date's approaching, that kind of thing. Um, but just like any event, we have to have a certain number of tickets sold in order to raise the money to to either break even or or make money off of the subject we don't uh, we we don't have the thing where we can you know go into the uh, into debt over an event or something like this so there have been times where we when you have low interest we do cancel it um it was i don't remember when it was canceled but it it was up until just a couple of days before so yes sometimes you do get you know, some walk-in um, people buying tickets and that kind of stuff. But the idea was to try and buy the tickets beforehand so we would know. Um, and it, even with that thought, like maybe some people will buy tickets at the door. It just, there weren't enough interest and it was not going to be worth all the trouble. So we got canceled. Sorry. Um, but again, if you are interested in going next time, please buy your tickets early. Uh, and that way we'll be able to have the money to fund the event. So maybe next year. Um, other announcements that are going on. So this one I'm sure is going to cause a little bit of a kerfuffle, but we are just kind of at our wits end here in terms of parents coming into the, sta the staff lot before and after school uh, and when they're not supposed to. We've sent out messages. We've done emails. Um, you know, we continue to have issues where parents are coming in and clogging up the staff lot and they're getting in the way of construction trucks. They're getting in the way of medical emergency vehicles. We had I mentioned that twice the other day. Um, we had an incident just yesterday, actually, out in the Horseshoe, where uh, there was a car accident. We had, you know, there was a, a sheriff's car there with lights on. There was a tow truck with lights on. They were trying to fix it, and people were trying to drive around them and get into the Horseshoe to wait for their kids. So, um, we got to take a little drastic measure here on the staff lot. We we are going to do is since we can't control it in the way that we've wished we could. Uh, starting on the Tuesday when we come back, we don't have school on Monday, but on Tuesday the fourteenth, we will be shutting down the entry to the staff lot. Um, you know, right around lunchtime and through the end of the day. Um, and that way people cannot come into that. You can, if you're in the parking lot, you'll be able to leave, but you will be not be able to come in and get your kid. Now, some people um, are actually, we allow them to come in there and do that. We're going to be sending you some information about, you know, where to pick up your student. If your student has mobility issues, that kind of thing, we'll have a new pickup spot for you, but we'll send that information directly to you. Those of you who have been using the, the staff lot for pickup, this will not be allowed. You should use the horseshoe, the student lot, or a, another off-site location to pick up your kid. Or just better yet, after the rain gets down, I know that's kind of making things a little bit worse here, but after that, please encourage your student to use alternate means. That could be walking, that could be skateboarding, that could be riding a bike. Please think about that, and then you won't have to worry about picking them up. Um, the lot is going to be closed in this manner for the rest of the year. Um, and so we just, we're going to have to do that because it's, it's just becoming unmanageable. So, um, I apologize to those who this may inconvenience, uh, that we're needing it for legitimate reasons, but for those of you who were ignoring us, we, we have to take it kind of up the thing here. So I, I wish our parents were following directions better, but not happening this time. So that's why we're going here. So thanks a lot. And, uh, again, if you're one of those parents that have the special permit to come in and pick up your student with mobility issues, please look for our email. We'll be sending that out here, uh, soon. Um, we, this is something, again, we need to kind of crack down a little bit on. Um, we have a new, uh, system in our, in our library, in our, um, cafeteria and food services where they absolutely have to have a student ID. It takes a lot longer and stops the line in terms of trying to stop and say, Oh, what's your name? What's your ID number? Making sure it's the right kid, all that kind of stuff really have the ID. So we're, we are really been cracking down on making sure kids have an ID or at least a picture of their ID. They should have it with them at all times anyway. And if they don't have one, they should go to the ASB office and get a new one. Uh, it's not that big a deal. Um, but we are pushing aside kids who maybe don't have their ID or they're having to wait. Um, again, one of our concerns and we keep getting is that it's taking too long for kids to get through. Like we, we are going to be able to serve kids, but it does slow the line down. Um, and so we do require that you have your ID card or take a picture of it. It's on your phone. You can use that as well, too. So please make sure your kid has one. Ask them if they do. If they don't, send them to the ASB office, which is located right there on the quad. Um, next week is cast testing. So our juniors are the lucky winners of the testing uh, lottery this year. Um, this is the schedule that you'll see out there. Um, we don't have school on Monday. Uh, this uh, you know, we do have school starts on Tuesday. So as you can see, I've, I've included a, a snapshot here of what that schedule looks like. You'll see in the morning on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we have 11th graders who are testing and they test on Tuesday for ELA that goes till about 1145 on Wednesday till about 1115 for math. And then the, the science test is shorter. But you'll notice that everybody else starts a little bit later in the day. So, um, again, this is the return of state testing that we used to have before the pandemic. And it's kind of come back in little weird ways. And now it's fully back and we are being required to, to do it in the full way. 
Um, so again, we still have block periods. You can still see how that kind of goes, but it's just going to be some different needs to get to school. Um, if you are one of the kids who are taking a test and you're absent, you will need to make up that test. So please do everything you can. If, as long as you're sick, please stay home. But if you're like, do everything else you can to get here and do this testing. So you don't have to do it. We, we do have to, we are required to have 95% participation. We missed that by a couple points last year, a couple kids last year. So we're really trying to make sure we don't get penalized the second year in a row um, for kids, not enough kids taking the test. And so, um, we are always proud of the results that happens here. Kids can also earn, you know, seals like bilingual seals or not bilingual, different things of, uh, about the testing. So there are some benefits to it. It, it. it is a test that, um, that we're required because it it's a lot of information. I know a lot of folks don't like the test, but it is something that we're required to do. So please encourage your student to be here and be here on time and uh, to eat a good breakfast so that they're ready to go. Um, moving on to important dates. We have a couple things here. As I said, we do not have school on Monday the 13th. Um, and then that week of the 14th is that special schedule. Again, if you need to roll back and look at that, you can. That's also on our website under Bell Schedules. Um, there is a, a PTSA parent ed presentation about impact teen driving. This is always a popular one. So sign up for that one and get your, get your uh, information about uh, what things your kid could be facing or you could be facing as they start to take on driving. Um, on the 17th, which is also St. Patrick's Day, this is the last day to drop a class with no reflection on the transcript. It's also the elections uh, informal informational meeting for ASB. The following week, we have the Battle of the Classes. That's the week of 320 with the rally. There's a bunch of different dress up and spirit days as we go along. Um, and then the rally for Battle of the Classes, that's what BOTC is, uh, is on Friday, 324. There is also an advisory that week. Uh, the topic is going to be Title IX. Uh, that is a rather heavy subject at times. So um, again, if your student um, has some potential issues with that topic, please let us know and we can provide a, a different uh, setting for them. Uh, we don't want to trigger anybody or make anybody upset with maybe they've had past experiences or, or unpleasant experiences with that. Um, but it is also something we're required to uh, let kids know about. So this is one of this is a, one done by the district mental health team. So it's really well done. I watched it just the other day. Um, so uh, again, I think it's a very worthwhile one, but we want to just be care that we're taking care of each other. Uh, and then we have elections, ASB elections, the week of 327. And that is all for today. Want to wish you all a safe and dry weekend. Hope that, um, you know, the you're able to get in and around when you need to and that you can avoid any of the mess that's out there. So stay safe, stay dry, and we'll see you next week for cash testing. Thanks.